Elba started his singing career at the age of four. His first duet with, was with his father, Benny Elbas, who himself is a renowned Israeli singer. The, sang, the first duet was the, the song, Abba Otchani Oev, Father, I Love You. At the age of nine, God's family became religiously observant. The first and most famous song written by his father and sung by the two of them after they became observant was it isn't hard to be, become observant. The song was an instant hit and touched the lives of thousands of non-observant Israeli families. As a child, he recorded four records with his father and later seven more on his own. He was 16 when he put his first solo effort called Lights at the End of the Tunnel. In 2005, he released Meaning, which sold close to 100,000 copies in Israel alone. His songs feature catchy tunes appealing to both the observant crowd as well as the non-observant. In 2006, he released another album named Kimat Sheket, Almost Quiet. A new disc called Benati Pod Between the Drops was released in 2008 and co-produced by Rudy Perez, who has written several songs for Christina Aguilera. One song playing on Israeli radio, Olam Shali Eladim, World for the Children, has become a huge hit. His Hashem Melech tour has over 180 shows in 53 cities. His music videos have been regularly shown on Israeli music channel, Channel 24. When he was 20, he met his wife, Maran, who happened to be a fan of his. They married and had three kids and later divorced. God, on, God, on several occasions, has mentioned that his objective is to bring people together and create unity through music. Welcome, God, to our show. Welcome. You told Welcome. me a lot of things about myself that I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Etty, Etty, somebody needs to call a shot, Hanit, because there is somebody single and ready to mingle in the house. I hear you are single, God. Call the match. Yeah, like God, and we have daughters. Well, we have single, daughters. I'm saying instead of mingle, I'm ready to have a Shabbos table. Uh, instead of <laughs> We'll find you. These Yentas will find you a nice Jewish girl, right, Eti? They'll have to. We'll have to interview them for you. <laughs> Before we start our formal interview, God, you know I have a very famous playlist, right, Eti? Yes. And one of my favorite songs on the Karen famous playlist is Hashem Melech, Hashem Malach, and I cannot have you here without you singing to me and Eti. That cannot happen. You need to sing. <laughs> ואגד לנו בתודה, הלל השם אלוקים. ואגד לנו בתודה, י' וה' וו' וה', השם אלוקים, השם אחד. י' וה' וו' וה', השם אלוקים, השם אחד. Thank you so much. That was amazing. Thank you. You know, God, we we we're so grateful that you're here with us today. Thank you so much. To be the son of such a famous singer, Benny Albaz, I'm sure was somewhat difficult because you were constantly in the public eye. Because your father is such a great singer, I'm sure you are constantly judged, judged on your singing ability and your level of religiosity. I'm sure your life as a child was not that simple. Can you elaborate on your childhood for us and your young adulthood? And also, can you tell us why your family decided to become observant? Okay, so there's few things being said here, uh, and it's quite interesting. Not a lot of people know, but when you are under a shadow of someone that is so big and significant in your life in general and in other people's life, yes, you've been judged with binoculars and every single thing, not how you say that, like microscope, not, not whatever, you know, the, they're looking at you and judge every step you do and they like uh, put you on the scale against his ability or spirituality or whatever, like exactly like you said. But my small miracles along the way, along the way that I had, is my dad was never um, forcing anything upon us. I have seven sisters after me, 
Wow. And uh, yes. And uh, all my sisters studied in Chabad. I was the only one, I would call it a wandering Jew, <laughs> that started started in the non-religious schools, then went to more um, modern religious, then to Chabad, then the hardcore Sephardic Yeshiva when I grew. And so I'm, I'm a mixture of so many different uh, colors in, inside the Jewish world. It made me be an outsider also uh, in every genre, in every school, and everything. Because A, I was famous uh, as a little kid already. So I was a quiet kid, even though I speak a lot today and I sing. But I was a very quiet kid till I was 17 years old. Um, one of the reasons is that because I was a son of, and I was judged, and no matter where I was, I didn't felt fed in nothing, fit in nothing. It wasn't like naturally. So for here, I was too non-religious. For them, I was uh, too religious. And then, and then like Sephardic and Ashkenaz and all that during Israel time. It was very uh, hard. When I started to grow up and I said, this religion is too much for me to handle. And I told my dad, I'm not performing with you anymore. I'm 16 years old. I had enough. I want to wear jeans and T-shirts and and do whatever I want to do. Uh, I'm going to keep Shabbat and I'm going to put on Philippe. But that's my thing. And I, I took a break from music and from everything. And I was a teenager. And I was uh, observing what's, why am I a believer? So when I got to the point when I started understanding that there is a God, regardless of where I am, who I am, and whatever my dad is, I started revealing in me uh, a very strong connect, connecting to Hashem, connection to Hashem. So, so with time, I realized that all those schools that I've been through and all the friends, different friends in different cities and different countries that we lived in America, we lived in Israel, we lived in four different cities. My life, my, my father was a rock star, so then religion and all that. So things were very messy in my life. And there was not even one year that I stayed steady. It's called Galut in Hebrew. And since I'm a little kid, that's probably one of my uh, destiny in life. So because of that, even in the music genres, I was exposed to so many of them. From R&B, Babyface, Stevie Wonder, to um, uh, Arabic, Moroccan music, to rock and roll, to everything. And I became like a chameleon in music, and I started loving everything. And I used to uh, go out and, and love Latin music and, and Gypsy Kings and all that. So the colors of my music is also the same. And the color of the people in my life are also the same. But I was very uh, into myself. When I started flourishing and becoming religious and understand that this is exactly why Hashem put me in all those stages in life. So I'll see Jews and understand we're all completing one big picture. And then I decided that I want to show that through music you can unite. And I started doing duet with non-religious artists and with Hasidic artists and making concerts for unity and thinking out of the box. A lot of um, rabbis were against me back back in the day. I was too modern for them. I was too thinking out of the box how to do Kira. So that's why Chabad is my main, uh, uh, the rabbi is my main uh, role model of how, how a Jew should behave. And I took it upon my life and got, I wanted to get married young, so I won't be in my father's footstep of being a rock star. And, uh, and then I start traveling all over the world and doing all that. And then through doing all that, doing Hashem's work, I forgot that I have a wife and kid that you need to be uh, a grown-up, a responsible man, also to take care of them and not just your fans or your career, that you're using God's name in order to be busy with that instead of your home. You're forgetting that home is first and then all that, but I needed to mature. This uh, journey that I've been through, um, when when I was immature, my wife was mature, and she was uh, telling me how, how am I doing mistakes, but I wasn't listening. And when I became mature, she wasn't ready enough anymore. So we moved to the state, we tried, didn't work out. And now I'm divorced with three kids, amazing kids. Me and, me and my ex-wife, my amazing ex-wife um, are in good terms. Uh, we we love each other as human beings, as the fathers of, I'm, I'm the father of her children, she's the mother of my children. 
And uh, there's harmony. And we understand that we came here for shlichut. Nothing is up to us. We just, the only thing that's up to us is how we receive uh, and accept our path in all matters. And uh, now that I am mature and, and going through all the stages in my life, and I've been traveling all over the world, but actually uniting Jews and all that, I'm going through two different major steps in my life. One is I'm ready to get married. The second thing is, that is also important, is my shlichut. It's not supposed to end. It's just starting. And I'm expanding it to the non-Jewish world. I'm doing collaboration with non-Jewish artists. And uh, I'm a face of a foundation that's called Enlight Unite, a non-Jewish organization that I'm going to be the face to represent the Jews in Israel. And together we are doing a unity tour, a unity album. Oh, wow. And I'm finishing two albums this year. Uh, uh, Can you give us a sneak peek of some of the um, non-Jewish artists that you're collaborating with? Yes. So I'm not allowed. It's for I'm not allowed to speak about it right now. It's for 2022, and I, I can't. There's a lot of uh, PR involved. We would love to get involved in it. Really, we really would. So I know I know you will speak after, and I heard, know your husband. And we'll we'll figure that out okay. later after the show. But this is what I'm holding right now. And I'm uh, doing another project inside the Jewish world that's called the Shabbos Project. Shabbos means a bus that we're going to tour with a rabbi, with a DJ, with a chef, with myself, and guest appearances all over the state. And wow. a darker reality show. They're going to be the first in the Jewish world. Of, Amazing. Uh, oh, wow. This is the we feel for we feel so fortunate that you are announcing this on our show. Yeah, live on the Yentas. <laughs> oh, yeah. Listen, you're going to spread the rumors because on yeah. Thursday it's going to be Chala Baking. On Friday it's going to be a rave with the DJ, following by Rob Kabbal Shabbos. And then with the Shabbat, we keep it the Shabbat in, in tents next to the Jewish community, let's say a big shul or a park. Wow. And then with the Shabbat at each concert. And we're going to go state to state and going to promote Shabbat with a song that's going to be released in a month max. It's called Good Shabbos. Uh, it's a Bob Molly uh, cover. You know, we're jamming, jamming. Yeah. So, Good Shabbos, Good Shabbos. <laughs> I want to keep it. So, it's going to be a cool um, music video also that we you shot. You better come to Studio City. That's, I'm, I'm, I, we, are, we are putting down a date. We are the first ones. <laughs> God willing, God willing. So, we're going to have a documentary on that, Docorality, and uh, a TV show following my career now to the next two years of all the me crossing over or expanding my career. Hebrew, uh, sort or, of, uh, Hebrew or American? Um, everything is in English, yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Great. So actually, it's really funny because you covered my next uh, question, which was in the music business, a lot of singers are geared towards one direction. And you sing for Ashkenazim, Sfaradim, Haredim, Israelim. <laughs> um, and all of, you know, we, I meet a lot of people in the entertainment industry, even Americans, you know, like not non-Jews. And they're geared, they're like the reggae or the rap. And, you know, they have one gen genre of uh, singing. And, you know, some people like them and some people don't. And you know why we are so persistent in getting you, God, is because your name, regardless of where I am, with Israelis, some Americans that are not Jewish uh, know about you. And everybody says, we love him. We love him. We love his music. Um, and now you can ask I, Can question. I share with you a secret? Yes. <clears throat> One of my biggest debates in life when I started, I wanted to, because I'm influenced by so many different types of music, every manager that I've been through in the past, besides Slomi, that is my manager today, was against my vision that I should have in my album all types of genres in one album. If you go back in time and you listen to my albums, you would have heard Latin and then hip hop and then slow song and then spiritual songs, then whatever in, in full, like five to eight years, different genres of music. Everyone was against me in that opinion because they told me 
people need to have, you need to have an identity. So I told them my identity mm-hmm. is that, that I'm singing to everyone. And my identity is that I believe that music is the tool to unite. So if I'm going to have in my album, people that loves Latin music, but it's my voice. So I'm going to do Latin music. Today with time, if I was right or wrong, by your, you presenting me the way you just said it, mean I was right. Means, means even though there was times that I was questioning that so bad, maybe I should just focus on one style and sing the same style and just be like that. That was my huge debate, even between me and my wife. She was against it. Uh, means she, she wanted me to have one style. Um, for example, Isha Rebo style that, that he started with me, me and Shlomi Cohen right here, we started his career for a year. Uh, we worked with him when he's in black, but Isha Rebo is one of the most significant ones because he came with the genre and, and that genre was something that I did for many, many years, but I also combined it with other things and people couldn't focus on what am I? So with time, I think with persistence and being loyal to my truth that it's uniting all type of Jews and I want all Jews to listen to me, I think I accomplished that. And for you saying it after so many years of hard work and debating and it's the right thing to do, I think uh, Hashem shows me that it's the right thing. I'll tell you, when we started the show, Yentas in the City, it was uh, just like I sent you and Shlomi, it was to, we realized that there is a lot of like different segments within Judaism and not just Judaism, non-observant. And a lot of our friends and even some of our producers said, listen, you can't have different t- people like Democrats and Republicans, singer. And we said, well, that's what we want the show to be, to unite all people and bring different stories. And in the beginning, people really criticized us 50,000 followers later. <laughs> Just like Amazing. you said, we are very happy um, that we went with our heart. And I think when you go with your heart- Stick to your truth. You, Stick to your, your truth. truth. And I think that's what everybody said about your music, that it's very authentic. And you know what's nice? Different people said in different places said that they felt that you are singing to them. And I think you touched so many souls Thank you so much for saying that. To be honest yeah. with you, it means a lot to me. Um, uh, there's one of the things that happening to an artist, because I'm doing it for so, so many years, and my dad is a famous artist. God is showing whoever is there for many, many years and is not a, you know, like a one-hit wonder and right. disappears or whatever. There's something so beautiful that God is making those artists humble. Means I'm one of them that he showed me that uh, A, uh, audience is the most uh, unloyal uh, 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 people in the world and you have to always interest them and it's work. If I look at it just as business perspective, it's hard work and it's in the Jewish world, It's a lot of people could tell you it's not even paid off unless you're in top 10. But when it comes to... Um, uh, changing, creating uh, movement, uh, uh, making people uh, be proud of their Jewish music. That's where I'm coming. I'm coming with that passion. And whoever comes with that passion or any passion like that with music, and there's no ego because the closest thing to Hashem is the hall of music and the hall of Torah. So it's right next door to each other. So you cannot live with pride, being about ego, with music it doesn't work and if you are you are you're you 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 are connecting yourself to the to the city to the right to the wrong side of this universe so that's how i see it yeah your passion definitely radiates through your music we can feel that through the music so there's a lot of amazing artists coming up that i'm getting to know slowly and we're signing soon and it's it's beautiful how the music industry when I was releasing all those pop, cool stuff, Robin would have guessed we didn't saw the future. And and today, um, everyone is like, in, 
everything is insta, everything is fast, everything is going. So we're using modern technology, modern music, modern everything, and it's fast. You got to be on point all the time. It's hard work, but it's that's how you bring salvation and light to the world. Um, and I'm happy that I'm consistent on, on my work all those years, to be honest. You know, I wanted to ask you, I know you received numerous emails from fans. Um, I wanted to know, I, I'm sure you received numerous emails and meet numerous people who tell you how your music has changed. Can you share some of the stories with our viewers from the emails and the people that you meet? Um, stories that have touched you the most from your fans? I have so many of them, to be honest with you. I'm going to share with you one, okay? Um, there's one French kid. He was 19 years old. He wrote us an email that he is, we didn't know nothing about him. He wrote us an email that he wanted to do a, a God Elba's first concert in Paris. That was like 10 years ago or something like that. And uh, uh, he wrote us an email and we contacted him back with the translator. And my manager was spoke, speaking to him and we decided we we're going to uh, go ahead and do it. Let's do the first concert with this kid. He sounds very promising. His entire family has a crew. It sounds very legit. He wires the money. Okay, we're going to go there. We went there. And they're picking up us from the airport and we see um, special need 20 years old boy that he's sh short, he's kind of a midget I would say, and and his entire body is, is not in the right place. And he, you see that this kid is not gonna survive. It's just so hard for him to survive. Everything is, and his biggest dream was to have a concert of God that was in Paris. And he convinced his entire family to produce a concert with him. And I, I've seen him and I said, are you sure there's going to be people here? Are you sure you know what you're doing, guys? And I'm like afraid. I don't know. I see, I see this. It's just his passion. Never did it before. I was like, so like, uh, I told Shlomi, I don't think, no one is coming tonight, you know, to the concert. Actually, I was, I was like, this is losing hope. The concert was one of the most successful concerts I ever did in my life. Wow. And he went on stage and he started crying, saying that was his dream. And wow. since, he's a, since he's a little kid, he listened to my music and he always felt that I'm his direct connection to Hashem. And I was tearing up. He was tearing up. And then he told me, uh, after six months, I want to do another concert. And uh, then he went to the hospital and I came to visit him. And he told me, um, I'm not going to be here in this world in the next few months. Oh my God. And I want you to remember that I'm going to be your guardian angel up there. And I'm going to always protect you. No matter where downfall you're going to have, I'm going to be there for you, praying for you, holding your hand. Just promise you one thing. When I'm going to pass away, you're going to be there singing Ms. Mola David. And I did. And I went and honored him in Israel and I sang his Mola David. Wow. And his entire family till today were in touch. And and this is one story out of so many that I have. There is one woman, I gotta say that, I just reminded that, non-Jewish woman. Okay. I go to the airport, it was four years ago. I go to the airport in Israel, flying back to New York. Um, I see a woman, looks at me, shaking. She's in her almost 50s, shaking, coming to me, covers with tattoos, comes to me and said, are you God Elbaz? I said, yes. <laughs> he said, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I need water, I need water, I need water. <laughs> he be today, blah, 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 like that. I said, what happened? Relax, relax. I got her water and was sitting down and she can't breathe and she tells me, listen, I'm going to tell you a story right now. You, you're hearing it from me. So this is something that you have to understand this is legit this is real and i can't believe it's happening to me god is exist god is the number one and i'm going to follow his lead and never single thing she's all i can't breathe i said can you tell me the story what what happened she said listen a year and a half ago i was diagnosed with cancer and they told me i have six months to live and i googled spiritual music 
your music came up first. I started listening to your music. And the first song that I came across was Ana Bechoach, your song. And I imagine that Ana Bechoach, and I read about it, the, the lyrics, Ana Bechoach, and I imagine how they're healing me all this time. And I said, if God exists and this song will heal me the way I, this, I'm going to go to Israel, go to the Western Wall and say gratitude to God, for God of Israel, that he healed me. And this is my trip after a year and a half saying gratitude to God. And I was in the Western Wall just now. And now I'm flying back to where I live in America. And I see you. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. Ama there are no coincidences. Wow. Of course. So she's live. She's alive. And she been interviewed saying all the story. Wow. So that, I have a lot of things. And it's not. I'm not going to say that this is me. Wow. I have an amazing powers. And I'm a superhero. This not how it works how it works is like this i'm a ch channel i'm a pipe whoever is an artist no matter what kind of art why we say amen and then we say amen amen is letters of aman artist okay it's a creator a creator not, must be connected to the creator that's number one in order to complete the 10th word in a bracha you say amen why because an artist is the only one that can take from above and bring it down like a creator. And, and, and when you tap into someone's soul through music, through art, through, through, through film, through any, any, anything like that, if it's been channeled the right way, it's literally you're channeling Hashem. So, so it's not, we're just, you know, we're just a pipe. And if we're not flowing that pipe, God is, is punishing people like me much harder than other people. Why? Because our role in life is to serve. Everyone, to be honest, role, role in life is really to serve, but more so when you're a when you're, uh, public eye and, and you have to. And that's, your, that's the reason why you're here on planet Earth. So that, the, the, all of those are, are my true beliefs and my true passion. And uh, yes, yeah, so I have many stories like that. Wow. God, you know, we can't have this interview without talking about your family. <laughs> you have three beautiful children. Uh, yeah. And recently, um, not so recently, but recently you got divorced. Divorce is always hard, but um, you are very, you are so authentic. I watched some of your interviews before this interview in expressing your regret, many regrets. And um, in your song, Mi Ma'amakim, the words are, Ratziti livnot bait yesodot chazakim, litlot ale shel zayit shelo nargish rechokim. Vekcat alachti leibud beyar shel shelot, alev margish chalud mechapes tshuvot. I wanted to build a house, strong foundations, and on the olive tree, so we do not feel distant. And I got a little lost in a forest of question, their heart feels rusty looking for answers. When I first heard the song, it touched my heart and really I started crying uh, because um, all of us in one point in our lives felt regret about something we did or couldn't take um, back. All of us, especially in the entertainment industry, search for balance between work and family. Um, unlike any other industry, the highs are very high. The lows are very lows, and the transition in between are not always easy. Uh, was this song about your divorce? Because I know, because we work in entertainment, and when my older daughter was born, really we started our career, we started our business, and you know, literally nine days after I gave birth, I went full time to work. I gave her <laughs> to a housekeeper with my parents. And even though, you know, we are very close and later, you know, financially, I was able to spend a lot of time with her. You know, the other two I spent, I always have that regret, even now, like I have that pinch that with my oldest one, I missed like seven, the first seven years of her life. You know, I was there, but I really was not there. And in the beginning of the interview, you told us about that regret, about how easy it is to forget because you want to give the community so much, and it happens to a lot of rabbis too. Uh, they give so much that they forget to take care of their own family. Was this particular song about your? I'm going to tell you. Um, first of all, that song, yes, and another song is called uh, 
Shalom Adon Olam, and another song in Techazak. Lately, I've been releasing all my pains out, and now I'm releasing all, all, a lot of happiness, ha happy songs. And I'm, the reason why I'm doing it is because, A, I think whoever knows me and follows my career throughout the years, I want him to feel part of who I am at the moment and what I'm releasing in those times. That's number one. Number two, there's two things uh, that I want to I wanna respond to this. One is you said rabbi. I'm going to touch that base. And the second thing is uh, um, our soul. I'm going to start with the soul. The soul before she comes to this world, she chooses to who to come to, how she's going to look. This is all Kadosh uh, Um, What will be her uh, uh, red flags that she knows she's mistaken? When to put the 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 the, the maklot ba like the sticks in the end of the carriage, so it won't move. All the maniot, everything we choose, our soul chooses. Means when your daughter chose to come to you when you are dealing with people, and you're doing A, B, and C, and she's not going to get enough attention, it's what her cho her soul chose. Now, same to you, same to everything was planned pre-organized why am i saying that because after the journey of what we are going to live in this planet earth we need to learn something so if by me is to learn that family comes first in order for me to get divorced i need to understand that it's worth it for me to get divorced to understand that if that's the only way for me to actually understand that and not let my ex-wife suffer for 50 years so I need a new wife and I need to become a best version of myself to do that. Her soul chose me and I chose her and all this circle of life is being chosen for us. It all depends what we do without outcome. That's our choice. Is we, are we taking it and learning from it or going to do the same mistakes all over again? Now, the, now that's about the soul, about the Rebbe, all the rabbis out there. That you're doing shlichut. The Rebbe Mnubavit says, whoever does shlichut, I'm promising him that his kids will not gonna, will not gonna go to Tabut Ra. How can he promise that? He sends people to Thailand when there's no Sefer Torah, when there's no shul, and then slowly he tells them to build it, and there's no school, and where they're gonna learn their Judaism, and where's society, and where's community, and eventually all the sons and, and daughters of Chabad Shluchim around the world they have a huge connection to Hashem. You know why? Because a, a, a son, a, a daughter, doesn't need from her, their parents full attention. What they need is a role model. Eventually, to have a destiny, to have a vision, and to and proceed that, that's what they remember. For example, myself. I remember more than anything in the world. No matter when, why, what our situation was, my dad always brought guests to to uh to to Shabbat. That's why I'm so grateful and I and I love guests today. And I've I respect my dad till today just by being that kind of a person. Forget about not him not being around, him not giving me love. And let's say more so, my mom been busy with only my dad. My dad was her hero and she forgot about us. A, B, and C, so many things happened as this as a, in my life. That yes, I've suffered a lot and it's not easy to be me, trust me, but I value now the love she had to my dad. Only when you have this, and that's what I'm looking for. And 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 now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cherish it. So, so there's a lot of things that we we think that we're not good parents, and we think that we're not that, we're not that, we're not that. It's all meant to be. We need just to watch and observe and oversee. If you are criticist to yourself, eventually you'll reach your goals and your tikkun. And that's the basics of Judaism. And remember not to judge yourself at all. That's the most important because it's all Hashem. All the good you do, it's Tanya, by the way, that all the good you do, it's not you. It's great. Hashem grace on you because mm -hmm. our nature is to be bad. Our nature is to sleep all day, not bless, not do nothing, be just uh, for ourselves. And whatever, that's our nature. So nobody can judge us. It's our nature. So everything good that we do, it's a sham grace. Everything bad that we do, it's just us. 
So you cannot judge anyone else because, or or be just be grateful for what you have because it's all chasdashem. How do you make chasdashem be on you? It says, "Everything is in your is 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 uh, is wow. in God's hand besides your emunah and Hashem." There is another word. There's another way of looking at this. Everything is in God's hand besides Yirat Shamayim. Listen to this carefully. If you ask for Hashem, Yirat Shamayim means you're asking for Him to believe in Him. Everything is in hand besides that. If you ask Him, Yirat Shamayim, He will give you Yirat Shamayim because He can't control it because you asked for it. Everything He can control. You can ask for wealth. He doesn't have to give you you can ask for, for health. It doesn't have to give you. When you ask for Yirat Shamayim, yeah. this you cannot even say no to. And you have to give you Yirat Shamayim. That's another version of how to look at it. God, I think you need to add Shurim to your resume of all the things that you do because like, you give incredible Shurim. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's really funny that you said that because my daughter now is a surgeon. And I told her now, because she's at an age that I want her to get married. And, and I'm like, Lizzie, why did you choose such a profession? You know, now you're going to have in this next generation. Again, you won't have time. And she goes, Ima, you did have time. And I said, what do you mean? And she goes, you know, you showed me that a career is important. You showed me that I have to be strong. And you showed me that I need to give back to other people. And she chose that profession. And she said that she's as strong as she is. Because she saw how hard we work. So, so now I feel a little bit less guilty. <laughs> yeah. God, um, before we wrap up the interview, because we're almost done, I have one last question. I wanted to ask you, um, we can't have an interview today without speaking about COVID. And I wanted to know how COVID has affected you as a musician. And are you worried that the new Delta variant um, is going to shut things down and you won't be able to perform. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm smiling about this COVID thing. Um, COVID saved my life. It did a lot of damage in the world, but it saves my, my life personally and a lot of people that I'm meeting saying the same thing. I needed that pause. I needed to observe. I needed to realize what I did so far in my life, where I'm heading and what are my goals. And it just put me in a, in a, in a nice Nice check mark. Where am I? Who am I? And what do I represent? So for me, it did a lot of good. Um, I'm not going to go into politics. I'm just going to tell you one thing. It's all for one reason only, to know that we don't control nothing in this planet Earth. And we can be controlled in one second. And there's, there's, that's my bottom line. Uh, there's there's a, a ruler to this Earth. And if people decided to bring this upon us, it's God decided that. We have to be precautious, and people were precautious all this time, and uh, and that's our job. Mm -hmm. But more than that, and go crazy and not work and not continue our life, that's against my beliefs. And we need to the opposite, be stronger together, create more, bring more light, more gathering in order for us to bring more light, because gathering is what unites us, what brings and heals the world. And that's my take on that. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Thank you, God, so much for joining us today. Your music has inspired thousands of people around the world. Orthodox and secular, Jewish and non-Jewish, the younger generation and the older generation. Your voice, your talent, your humbleness, and your heart of gold is reflected in your music. Your ability to share both the highs and lows of a musician's life is very rare to see, and we truly think that's why people connect to you on so many levels. We really feel that your beautiful music and the messages of, the, of your lyrics of your songs will ultimately be the bridge that connects all people, regardless of their religion and backgrounds. Thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. And we can't wait to see you in concert.
We just can't wait for that. We would like to thank all of our followers for listening to this episode. Please remember, you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and TikTok at Yentas in the City. You can also write to us at dearyentas at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you and answer your letters on our our, um, weekly advice column. We would like to thank our sponsors for today, Soft Smart Systems International and Conquest Realty Investments. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We have a lot more coming. This is Karen Cohen and Etielkis, and we are Yentas in the City. Remember to always be the Ruth in the room and do the right thing. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you, Thank guys. You, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>